generally uh, talk radio tends to be a lot of conversation that is general, that is vague in nature and we're trying to bring specificity to it. Let's look at the Russian trip. What are the tangibles? What are those things that were achieved that will benefit the lives of Nigerians? First of all, uh, in that Russian trip, we were able to uh, secure an agreement in the oil and gas sector, amongst multiple sectors, but I'll get into it. In the oil and gas sector, we struck an agreement between the NNPC and Luke Oil. Luke Oil uh, is a, a, a major oil and gas, uh, gas conglomerate that deals in not just pipeline networks, but oil refining, uh, up, uh, upstream and downstream production, exploration, etc. Now they have about $38 billion in annual profit turnover. It's a major company. They're going to work with us to, uh, to streamline our refining operations. Not only the process of rehabilitating the refineries. You know, we have three refineries, Potako, Tuari, and Kaduna. We already have a partnership in place uh, with the uh, the, the, the Saudis as well, amongst the three refineries. So with China coming in, uh, with uh, Russia coming in now, that's going to be part of that. So refinery rehabilitation is a very uh, important uh, aspect of the agreement. Uh, next, we'll look at uh, solid minerals. Well, Nigeria, everybody knows, uh, all of our people know that Nigeria is very wealthy in, in all sorts of minerals, particularly solid minerals, gold, uh, barite. I mean, I can't list them all here. Uh, so many, even. Uh, uh, steel, for example, we have everything that we need. But the issue has always been about how to uh, formalize mining processes, how to effectively regulate mining practices so that the country can benefit uh, fully from uh, mining operations in the country because for such a long time we've been doing illicit mining operations. Now, we struck an agreement between the Nigerian Geological uh, Survey and the, uh, the uh, Russian uh, Geolog Geological Services Agency. Now, what they're going to help us do in specific terms, according to the agreement, is they're going to go around the country with us and bring in their technology to geologically map the country. Because, you know, a major aspect of formal investment, major investment, when you hear of, you know, South Africa, for example, where miners, mining companies, are bringing in billions of dollars to mine, Part of the reason why they have the confidence to bring in their huge amounts of money is because the South Africa has been geologically mapped. You know exactly, <coughs> excuse me, you know exactly which mineral is where, you know the quantity of each mineral and where it's located. So once we are able to geologically map our, our country and everybody knows where the minerals are and how much mineral deposit exists in each place, you will now have that influx of investment because people will be able to target their their investments. So that's a, a very important point. Uh, the, so solid minerals and oil and gas are done. Now defense, major uh, area of development here is the issue of uh, uh, what they have agreed to do, the Russian uh, Defense Corporation and uh, the federal government, is they're going to work with us to not only evolve our strategies around anti-piracy in the Niger Delta, where obviously we've had issues with oil bunkering, illicit uh, oil exports, uh, uh, you know, theft on the waterways of oil products, etc., uh, etc. Et the Russians, because they have so much experience, not just in oil and gas, as a huge uh, producer and member of OPEC, but also because they are, you know, on the Black Sea, they also are involved in surveillance in the Strait of Hormuz with Iran. Uh, they have a lot of experience in tackling piracy issues. So they're going to work with us to bring in their ships, to bring in their technology, to bring in their manpower to help us not just develop our strategies, but also to develop uh, our, uh, our equipments and our uh, infrastructure to be able to effectively fight piracy in the Niger Delta. And obviously that's going to have a huge impact on our move to encourage modular refineries and more private refineries in the Niger Delta to remove you know, the illicit practices that have been going on for such a long time. So that's one leg of the deal. On the other end of the defense deal, the same defense deal, we've, we're acquiring 12 MI-35 attack helicopters. Anybody who is a historian of war will be able to tell you what an MI-35 can do. Particularly in the Afghan war in the 1980s, the Russians brought their MI-35s and that was a very critical weapon uh, that was deployed during that war. Essentially, you have high-level uh, artillery, not just uh, bullets, but you're talking of actual missiles, guarded, targeted missiles, 
but you have artillery that can be firing at a rate of about 300 bullets per minute. Huge amounts of artillery, very quickly. So you're able to do a lot of damage very quickly on the fly. Uh, it's also a very swift aircraft. It's a, it's a very stealthy aircraft. And so given its speed and given its ability to travel over a very long distance, across the country almost, uh, I, think, I think the range is about a thousand kilometers. So you're able to make a lot of uh, make up a lot of ground very quickly. So with that, we believe that that is going to be very strategic in terms of giving uh, our armed forces the, uh, the armament they need to effectively deal with Boko Haram, to deal with bandits, etc. So now, that's defense, right? Now we go into uh, steel development. Huge aspect. Everybody talks about Ajeo Kuta, and rightly so. We're all frustrated that for, for almost 40 years now, Ajeo Kuta, a $5 billion investment, has essentially been put to sleep. Uh, by successive governments. Uh, now, President Mohamedou Buhari is bringing that back to life already. We've already seen uh, it come back to life with what we can do with our own engineers, but our own engineers could only bring it back to a certain level of capacity because we don't have the kind of uh, steel, for example, the kinds of uh, materials that we need to do a full revamp. So that's where the Russians come in. We've signed a deal with the Russian steel company uh, to essentially come in and help us rehabilitate a Geokuta steel plant to 100% capacity, back to 100% capacity. Uh, and not only is that going to happen, but in so doing, we're also linking a Geokuta to uh, Wari Seaport with a new 3.9 billion US dollar railway that's going through Wari, through Itape, with a spur into Lokoja, uh, through, uh, through uh, Ajeokuta into Abuja. So these are all things that we, we have in mind. Uh, we have uh, on ground and that agreement is going to help us really resurrect that. Now the final uh, aspect, which I personally am very excited about, is transportation, rail transportation. In rail transportation, we've struck an agreement with a, a major uh, railway uh, 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 carriage manufacturer that essentially, you know, for a while now, we have been, uh, you know, funding Chinese to come in and build our rail lines and also to build our carriages, right? So they build it in China with Chinese labor, they now import it into the country, which, is, which is, has worked for us in the sense that it, out of necessity, we have had to do that, but it's not the best thing for us. So what we are now saying is we've asked the Russians, let us build a factory, a major facility, an industrial facility, where we will produce our own rail carriages, world-class rail cars that our people can enjoy with air conditioning, with TVs and computers and everything. Uh, and, and all of that. Then, not only will we have the passenger rail cars that we'll be manufacturing with this Russian company, I believe the factory will be sited in Ogun State, if I'm not mistaken. Then, we're also going to be building railway carriages that are open air, right? These are the ones that carry the containers from the ports. So you load the containers and you're able to mobilize them out very quickly and decongest the ports and, and take pressure off of the roads around the ports, like we've seen uh, over the last few decades. So these are, these are the major components of the Russian deal, which we are very, very, very excited about. And uh, I think anybody who understands everything I have just said will agree that Mr. President was not wasting his time uh, in Russia. The second leg was this most recent trip to Saudi Arabia. Uh, and uh, There are a few very important uh, components of what we have accomplished there. First of all, uh, the king of Saudi Arabia, King Salman, has agreed with uh, President Mohammed Buhari that the time has come for us to take a comprehensive look at terrorism that is no longer just an American, European and uh, Middle Eastern issue. That because of the, 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 the huge uh, uh, defeat that ISIS suffered in, the, in Syria and Iraq, that now all those forces have moved down through Egypt into the Sahel. So it has become an African problem as well. And they know that Africa, if, if the uh, Middle Easterners know that if Africa is not effectively uh, protected, that ISIS will have a very uh, comfortable base to, to uh, conduct attacks in the Middle East. So they are now partnering with us in a real way, not just in terms of defense, but also in terms of procurement to ensure that we're able to safeguard uh, the, the Sahel and the West African sub-region in particular. The other aspect of it is that we have agreed to an unprecedented establishment of what we are calling the Nigerian Saudi Council. The Nigerian Saudi Council is going to be a council that is made up of the leadership of, uh, of both the government of Nigeria and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at all levels. That's trade, defense, you name it. 
And within that council, they're going to meet twice every single year. All right, twice every single year. And they're going to evolve new agreements, sector by sector by sector, based on the needs of each partner. Right? So in oil and gas, they're already working with us. We, we have an agreement in place for them to fix uh, some of our refineries and also to build new refineries in Nigeria. They want to they invest huge money to invest in, to build new refineries. So not only are we going to have the Dangote refinery on stream, we're also going to have the NNPC refineries recovered by 2023. And we're also encouraging the Saudis to build brand new refineries so that we have competition within the country and, and we can bring prices down and make sure that no person enjoys a monopoly in oil refining in Nigeria. Very, very important. So uh, these are some of the very important uh, uh, things, that outcomes uh, of, of, of it. And also, while Mr. President was in Saudi Arabia, he also had a meeting with the US, the United States uh, Treasury Secretary. And as part of that agreement, uh, Steve Lucin, as part of the discussions they were having, uh, the U.S. Treasury Secretary made clear to President Mohamed Buhari that he wants Nigeria to be able to key in to the 60 billion U.S. dollar uh, infrastructure development fund that is for Africa uh, through the International Finance Corporation that is based in Washington, D.C. So, Mr. President made it clear to the U.S. Treasury Secretary that this is something that's very important to him, that this is something that he wants to do, uh, that he wants to uh, uh, engage in. And so that, that was a major outcome as well. So we're hoping that we can get a very huge amount of infrastructure financing from that $60 billion American fund uh, in addition. So you look at the totality of the Russian and Saudi Arabian trips, you'll come to the understanding that uh, Nigerians have a lot to benefit uh, from those trips.